Hey, it's uh, Chris over at Dixieland Farm, and today I'm going to do a very short flight, and I was just so excited. Uh, I was looking at different airports to go to, so I usually try to connect my uh, flights. So if I land in an airport, I pick up from that airport and go somewhere else, and I tend to do that until I reach some kind of destination of some sort. It all depends. So I've been doing a tour in the Piper Twin Comanche I left my local airport, went up to the mountains, then kind of up to Blacksburg, Virginia, and then come back around, and then down into North Carolina near my uh, workplace, and then from my workplace down over to um, Greenville, Spartanburg, South Carolina, and then we uh, worked our way to uh, Aiken Regional, then regional to Orangeburg, and now from Orangeburg I looked up online, and this is why I was excited. It is kind of near where we spend the night in Walterboro. <laughs> Occasionally we'll call our dog Walt. Uh, we'll call him Walterboro. So this is where we usually stop. It's uh, about halfway to Disney. We will leave the night before, and I've done videos on that. So I thought, oh, how cool. We'll go to Walterboro, and I'm doing this all again VFR, and I just wanted to show you on the map and how I plot out a VFR path here. So leaving Orangeburg, there is... Train tracks, that's what uh, that symbol is, train tracks. So we'll follow the train tracks into Branchville, and then there's uh, train tracks again that then goes to Reevesville. And from there, we pick up I-95 and just keep it off our left-hand side. And there's uh, some kind of indication once we pass over another train track. And then there should be the blinking light of Walterboro and the town of Walterboro. So uh, we'll have a beacon there. And then uh, Walterboro is not too far off from Hilton Head. We could go there or Savannah and then work our way down into Florida is I'm guessing what we're going to be doing in the future here. But you won't be seeing that. And also I'm going to keep this uh, video relatively short. I'm just going to kind of do the run up and we'll, we'll take it from takeoff and then we can spot out the things that we're going to be using as visual clues to navigate. <laughs> I love this. So in the... There's my plane and <laughs> in arrival. It doesn't even know. <laughs> it, it, it is such an unused airport that they, they're not even pretending to know. So, Orangeburg traffic. This is Twin Piper 5522 Lima, taxiing runway 5, Orangeburg. Orangeburg traffic. This is Twin Piper 5522 Lima, crossing runway 1735, Orangeburg. Orangeburg traffic, this is Twin Piper 5522 Lima, taking runway 5, Orangeburg. Alright, so let's go ahead and take off. Airspeed is alive. And rotate. Tap the brakes. Gear coming up. And there we go. There's the railroad tracks. So here we are, following the railroad tracks. So hard to tell. But that's a road all the way on the left-hand side, but down in here, those are railroad tracks. And the railroad tracks come into town and then veer off here. So we're going to be following that, and that's in Branchville, which we knew that was the case. So we've got the road and the railroad right next to each other. Occasionally you will see a train on these tracks. So you see that flashing light that's uh, ahead of us. That is, if we look at the map the St. George, and that's where we're going to turn and pick up 95 here. Alright, so we're looking for a major road going outwards, and I think that is the interstate there. You see we got uh, one lone truck on it. No, Interstate 95, right? That's what we're looking at here, and that is what we would down, take down to Disney. We'd actually pick up a couple of different interstates, but 95 down to I-4, so 
Very exciting. And then somewhere down there should be Walterboro. So as we come down, we're going to keep the interstate on our right-hand side. Look at that. We got just another one lone truck on the interstate. Must have been an accident or something. So while we're here, I'm going to point this gauge here. So even though we're not tuning in anything, what I'm using that is, is a visual representation of the landing runway, which is runway 5. We're going to check the uh, weather. Yeah. And we're going to... Wind is out of 040 heading, so runway 5 is great. It's a little gusty today, so landing is probably going to be a little suspect. Well, there's the airport right there. Let's make a call. Low County Regional, this is Twin Piper 5522 Lima. We'll be joining the, from the north, we'll be joining the left hand wind for runway 5. Full stop. Low Country. So I'm trying not to drop too fast because our ears are going to pop. Uh, so, 1,000 feet a minute is probably pushing it in a small general airplane that's not pressurized. Uh, 700 would have been much more comfortable, but we're doing fine. So we're coming in, and I've slowed down quite a bit as well. Low County Regional, this is Twin Piper 5522 Lima joining the left downwind for runway 5. Full stop. Low Country. Now that is too cool. All right, I'm. I don't know if any of you can see it, but <laughs> take a look at the outside view. <laughs> so cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and park this aircraft. And what we'll do is we'll do one more mag check. Just to make sure that the mags are alive, that way if somebody accidentally got into the propeller, bumped it, it wouldn't accidentally start going. And we can turn off our, uh, our squawk there. Turn off our avionics. Kill the power. Kill the beacon. Kill the batteries. There we are. A beautiful Walterboro. <laughs> so, great flight. Uh, turn to base was a little eh, but we were able to save it, and we can actually probably see that in the assemble uh, Let's take a look. Looking at our flight path, though, we did okay. So we came in at a 45-degree angle, joined the downwind, came over to base, and then to final. So even though it looked a little sloppy, uh, we were able to save it and land, and what a good landing. So, fantastic. Thanks, Land Farm. Thanks for watching.